Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of Age of Conan Bleach Number no. 1 by Marvel Comics. So this is the third Conan title that Marvel has put out since they got the rights to Conan back. And so I reviewed the number ones for the other two titles. I didn't really care for Conan the Barbarian. Uh, Savage Swords number one I did like, and I'm currently reading that series. This one is uh, somewhere in between. And I think my main reaction to it is just confusion. <laughs> so let's start with this cover. So this is a gorgeous cover. I mean, it's beautifully rendered. Um, I mean, this is just gorgeous. I mean, absolutely gorgeous cover. I love looking at it. Now, here's the problem. It is the what it communicates. So, when I look at this, being a comic fan, I'm assuming that this is a book where I'm going to be reading about a half-naked woman and, you know, we expect, you know, a lot of the men in the audience to ogle over her because, you know, she... She's half naked and, you know, it's just to kind of show off her body or whatever. Um, when you read the interior, it's not like that at all. There's nothing that looks remotely like this in there. Um, I don't know if this is an artistic interpretation or if she will look like this by the end of the miniseries, but there's nothing like that. It is not a book about ogling over anybody. It is a book written by Teeny Howard, and I would say that part of the audience that she's going for is women and teenage girls. I can't tell that from looking at this cover, so I'm not sure why they went this route, um, at least not on the first issue. You know, if she looks like this in the last issue, this makes sense, but not for the first issue, because again, you know, if I handed this to a woman, I'm not sure, you know, what, what the reaction would be. But, you know, if I handed uh, the interior to a woman, I think I'm going to get a completely different reaction. And actually, um, the interior art is also quite nice. So, ringing the bell there, that is Little Bleat. She starts as a girl in this series, and uh, you will notice that she is very pale. This is because this is how... Robert E. Howard described her as an adult. Um, and so, presumably, she will become the same belief that is in the Robert E. Howard story, The Queen of the Black Coast. Now, that's not the same belief as in the comics, though. This is not going to be the belief that is in the Roy Thomas Conan comics. And that's kind of confusing, too, because with Savage Sword and Conan the Barbarian, they made a very big deal. We are picking up on those old Conan comics. It's going to be in the same continuity. Everything counts as those old Conan comics. So I don't know what this series is. That's part of my confusion. Is this going to be a one-off tale of belief that just doesn't relate to anything else that's ever been published? Or is this some kind of attempt to create an alternate continuity for Conan for some reason? So Marvel will be doing two versions of Conan's world? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> like the other, the other new number ones that Marvel put out had like these text pieces in the back, these editorials that explain all this stuff about the title, and I didn't really need those. This one, I could use one of those editorials. Like, tell me what this is, guys. I just, I, you know, I just want to know. Um, but that being said, even though it is not a tale of this elite, the one from, you know, the comic books that I was expecting, <laughs> it is, again, cover looks beautiful, interior art is gorgeous, um, and the writing is pretty solid. Now, there's some disorientation uh, when, I, when I read it. I'm not a big pirate guy. So, when they were using the term Dread Admiral to describe her father, I wasn't quite sure what that meant. 
because they're referring to him as being a former pirate and then him being a dread admiral. So I thought like, oh, okay, he retired from being a pirate and now he's an admiral for somebody. And apparently no, dread admiral is apparently a term that just means he was a pirate leader of a fleet. Um, there are probably a lot of people who, in this day and age with like Pirates of the Caribbean who are more familiar with this stuff than I am. Um, I would say if you're a pirate fan, that is another audience for this book. Girls, women, pirate fans, people who are just interested in Belit or just want to see a different version of this character than the old comics. You know, this is a very valid comic for all of them. It is solid. But again, that little jargon with the Dread Admiral kind of threw me. Uh, but I could figure that out. Um, but there's some other story details I feel like should have been in this first issue um, that kind of got me a little confused. So, for instance, her father is a retired pirate. It appears he's been that way for a while. But for whatever reason, when he gets captured by some bad people, and we don't know who they are, you know, or who hired these people to kill her father, um, I suspect that is intentional, that we will discover that later, so they didn't say that in the first issue. That's fine. But when he gets captured, she says that they need to go get his crew. Why isn't his crew helping him? So I'm a little confused. Like, if he's been retired for a while, why does he still have a crew? Why, what would they be doing? Why would they f follow him if he's no longer a pirate admiral? I don't know. I, I'm a little confused at that. And we don't see them except for one scene where I believe it's the crew stealing the Tigress. That people, like, go and, like, burn one of his ships and steal another one. Um, and I think that's probably the crew uh, doing that because Belit says a line about the Tigress that it is she has more right to it than the people who are stealing it. And the only way that they could have any right to it, I could imagine, would be if they were a former crew of that ship. Um, so I found that to be a little confusing. We don't know what happened with her mother uh, only that she had a mother at some point, of course. Um, but that could be something else that they're just uh, going to reveal down the line. Um, it is, even though that does not follow the Roy Thomas comic books, um, there are definitely this, a lot of the same names are used, a lot of the same plot elements. Again, her father is killed, and that sets her on her journey to become the Pirate Queen. Um, but, uh, you know, again, her p father was a pirate. This is, this feels a lot more like One Piece than Robert E. Howard. Um, and again, you know, for the audience it's going for, that's probably not a bad thing. I mean, there's definitely some things that would not fit in your regular Conan comic. Uh, at the beginning, Belit says that she wants to go hunt beasties in the sea, um, I never thought I would hear, hear the term beastie in a Conan story <laughs> or Conan-related story. But um, Teeny Howard, who, no relation to Robert E. Howard, she's a comic book writer, who writes this story said she was not trying to imitate uh, Robert E. Howard. She was going for something different. And I appreciate that, and I think she has succeeded in being different. Um, but there are definitely some Howard moments in there. Um I, the, the scene with her t father, you know, dying is particularly tough and, and does feel kind of brutal in the Robert E. Howard way. It's still something I feel like, you know, a teenage girl could read, but it's, it's, it's pretty heart aching emotionally is mainly the thing. It's not gory, but, you know, it's a sad moment. Um, and I think that's, to me, kind of what elevates this comic from something like, I don't need this. Um, it does show definite potential for being good. That being said, not necessarily enough potential for me to want to buy it for $4 an issue, but I am intrigued to see where it goes. I mean, if I could get it out of a discount bin, I definitely would. 
uh, just to see like uh, alternate telling of Elite's origin. I mean that does, that is kind of interesting. And um, and well, first of all, is this a gorgeous splash page? Yeah, yeah, there are some beasties. <laughs> so she starts calling them sea monsters by the end. So I think you know the the term beastie was meant to show her. Uh, you know, as a child, and here she's more mature after her father died. But anyway, so there is a prose, uh, serialized prose story in the back of the Age of Conan Belit miniseries, just like there is in the other two titles. Um, this is actually a story of Belit, and it's not as bad as the one that was in Conan the Barbarian number one, which I just found super boring but it's nowhere near as interesting as the one in Savage Sword. So everything's just kind of in between on this book. Um, and so, and this is the cover for the next issue. And I, it is gorgeous. Um, I'll say that this costume is pretty typical pirate stuff, but I think that's what they're going for. Again, if you're a fan of pirates... I honestly don't know if there are that many comic books out there for you. So, I mean, this might be right up your alley. Like I said, like I said, if you know female fans or fans of pirates or, like I said, just fans of Belit or someone who wants to see a different take on this, I'd, I'd recommend this. I mean, I, I mean, for me personally, nah, you know, I don't feel like it's worth $4 for my personal sensibilities. But I think there are a lot of people out here who are probably going to dig this new Belit <laughs> story and it's kind of neat regardless of what version it is that there is finally a Belit number one <laughs> in existence that this character finally had after all these issues uh you know and having like several years of a of the series revolve around her uh finally has like her name as the title of the comic so all right, well, that is pretty much all my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you thought of the issue. Did you like it? Did you not? Were you hoping to see this version of Belit, or were you glad to see another version of her? Um, and like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, see ya.